Hi everyone, in this project we're going to create a simple and quick animal spot or stripe brush in Procreate and then you can use that on some of your illustrations. This is the iPad Art Break series where we're going to do all kinds of fun projects like this together. So let's dive into this animal spot or stripe brush project. You can use these brushes to quickly add animal stripes or spots to a background, some lettering, or an actual animal. You could also sell these brushes on a place like Creative Market or Etsy if you made a pack of them with some cute example illustrations and bam, you're making money from your brushes. Yes, it is actually that easy to sell your brushes. I'm Liz Kohler Brown. I'm a surface designer and hand letterer who creates artwork for products sold around the world through licensing, print on demand, and my Etsy shop and I love helping other creatives find their style and sell their work. So let's go ahead and dive right into this project. So I'm starting out here in Procreate with a 3000 by 3000 pixel canvas. You can use that same size or something bigger. Basically, this is the largest your piece can ever be used. So if you want it to be larger, go ahead and make it larger. And just keep in mind, it needs to be a square canvas. So here are some ideas for you. Zebra, snake, cheetah, leopard, jaguar, dalmatian, hyena, salamander, tiger, fish, eel, or birds. All of these creatures have some interesting markings to take inspiration from. So go ahead and pull up a reference image and you can use any image that you want. Of course, we're not copying anyone's image, but you're using inspiration hopefully from multiple images. I'm gonna be using the brush set that I created for you all called the Everything Bagel brush set. It's got everything. That's why it's called the Everything Bagel. You can get it as a free download right below this video. So if you wanna pick those up before you start this project, go ahead and grab those. I'm gonna be using the rough inking brush. And I'm just going through looking at my zebra and I'm drawing these, but not going to the edge because that's how we're gonna make this a seamless brush. We're not gonna go all the way to the edge. We're gonna go close, but we're gonna to have to fill in the other parts later on. So get as close as you want and you know, try to get interesting shapes here. You don't, you wanna surprise your viewers. You don't want to become redundant or typical or expected. You wanna get, get weird, make some weird marks. I'm just gonna like not allow any sharp edges to be here. That's why I'm going through some of these over again because sharp edges are not something that you see on a zebra's body. All right, that's pretty good. I don't want to fill in too much of this or I'm gonna end up not being able to make it seamless. So that's close enough. Create a new layer right below it Get pure white as your color and press fill. I wanna note here that we're always working in pure black and white for these brushes. And you can do that by just double tapping in the black, double tapping in the white, that gets you a pure color. So now we got some black stripes, we've got a white square, and we're gonna merge those babies. Go to the tool symbol, canvas, turn on the drawing guide, edit drawing guide, all the way up to max, so we've just got a big plus sign. Duplicate four times. Take the top one and tapping on snapping, turn on snapping, and by tipping I mean tapping. Tap, tapity, tapping on the left, top, on the bottom, right, on the bottom, left. Pinch those babies, merge them all. Same brush, same concept, but now we need to match them. And so you gotta think a little bit. Starting on the outer, if you're doing stripes like me, if you're doing spots, then you get to be a little bit more free form. But how about this? Ooh, I didn't leave myself enough space. Let's just go sneaky, sneaky. Connection point right here. I mean, zebra stripes are loose, you guys. Doesn't have to be perfect. And why don't we have a few that are just like little sneaky hidden 
single lines. I mean, yeah, you see that sometimes on a zebra. So I think the key here is like keeping it really diverse. You don't want to have redundancy over and over the same shape, the same line. That's what makes people yawn when they look at your stuff, but make it surprising. Make it like, Oh, I didn't expect that little twist and turn and keep looking back at your animal, whether it's zebra or whatever you're doing, keep looking back at it and saying, am I getting off track here? Am I getting too wild to where someone might look at it and say, that doesn't look like a zebra at all. You kind of have to tread that line as an artist between keeping it interesting, keeping people excited, and not getting too off track so people get confused. Don't want too much white, so I'm just going through and adding a little more black here and there. I don't like this. Boop, boop, boop. That's like very, that's what I would call redundant. Let's go up here, switch that up, switch that up. Okay, that's a little more exciting. Could we do another like hanging one like that? One last one, okay. Okay, okay, I'm done. Share, JPEG, save that baby. And that is your brush grain. So now you can go, I'm using the same brush set, everything bagel baby. Go to one of the brushes that's an animal brush, like my tiger stripes texture, duplicate it, tap on it one time, tap grain, edit, import, import a photo, get that grain, dunsies, dunsies, Make everything invisible, put down a pretty color, get a new color, and let's see what your, let's go to about this brush and rename it, zebra stripies. Ooh. Let's take, turn our canvas grid off so we can really see what we're doing here and make it pretty. Ooh, yep, I'm into it, I'm into the zebra. All right guys, so you can do that. That's a cool background. Or you could do it on something like a little cute cheetah. Look how I did this little cheetah guy. And to do that, we're just creating a cheetah shape, which I start by creating a sketch. I'm going to take you just through the steps of this. We're talking loose sketch, people. I'm not joking when I say loose sketch. Then we get a slightly more refined sketch and then a even more refined sketch with some lines. Then I'm just adding in a background color and filling that whole shape. And then on a clipping mask layer, which you can do by tapping on the layer and tapping clipping mask, you can add your spots. And then of course, if you wanna add a little more detail, like a little bit on his chest and some eyeballs and a cute little nosy nose and maybe some plants behind, why not? Maybe even a little like halo behind it. That's how you can build a fun little composition. If you would like to see a video where I draw my animals like I do here, then hey, just request it and maybe I'll do it for you. So did you like making that brush with me? I hope you made one along with me. And if not, you can do it later, but please share it with me. I would love to see what you made. Tag me on Instagram and I will see you over there. Question time. This is the part of the video where I answer a question that you all have posted in the comments under one of my videos. So if you'd like to have your question featured here, just ask me something in the comments and maybe you will be the person on the slide next time. This question is from Suzanne Waters. Hi, Suzanne, just found you on YouTube. Could you suggest what iPad would have the best specs for surface pattern design? Hoping Santa is bringing me one for Christmas. Thanks so much, great videos. I hope Santa brings you one for Christmas too. I'm gonna put in a good word for you. 
I think that the best iPad for you will depend a lot on your lifestyle. If you want to be super mobile, then get one of those lighter ones that works with the Apple Pencil. You'll be good to go. I will tell you, the bigger you go, the easier it is to see. If you're like me and you like to see things big, then you might like the bigger iPad Pros. But of course, you can make it work with the smaller ones. The big ones do tend to work a little bit better with Surface Design because some of your files can get really big. And in Procreate, your layers are going to be limited depending on how big your iPad is, basically how big the processing power is of your iPad. So you might want to think about that. Do you want to work big? Are you an artist who likes to make bigger stuff? Are you just designing greeting cards? That's going to be okay with a smaller iPad. I also have a whole blog post about this. So if you guys want to get into more nitty gritty, go to the link in the description to this blog post, and then you can read all about what kind of iPad you might want to get. So I'll see you all next time in the next iPad art break. And I can't wait to see your animal spots and stripes that you created from this video. Bye.